After Flight 9, Musk quietly revealed something that stunned engineers worldwide. He's removing one grid fin from Starship's booster. Why would he mess with a system that's delivered three perfect catches? The answer is Mars. One fin weighs three tons. Remove it, and you can carry three tons more supplies to Mars. That's enough oxygen, water, and equipment to keep astronauts alive longer. But here's the catch. Recent Starships have been exploding. S-33, S-34, S-35, all destroyed. S-36 blew up so hard the flames were visible from miles away. So why is Musk testing this risky change now? What he revealed about Mars missions will change everything you think you know about space travel. Let's dive right in. The room fell dead silent. There stood Musk, next to a massive Starship booster, pointing at something that made every engineer's heart skip a beat. The presentation slides flashed the impossible. Only three grid fins, where there should be four. This wasn't a design error. This wasn't a typo on the slideshow. This was Elon Musk, betting humanity's Mars future, on removing three tons of proven flight hardware. Three tons. That's heavier than two cars stacked together. Compare that to Falcon 9's tiny 140-kilogram fins, and you realize we're talking about something 20 times more massive. Something that's worked perfectly three times in a row. But Musk saw something nobody else did. A problem so massive, it could kill Mars colonization before it even begins. Every single kilogram is a matter of life and death. When you're traveling to Mars, you can't stop at a gas station. You can't call for supplies. Everything you need to survive must fit in your rocket. And right now, Starship isn't caring enough. Here's the brutal reality. Removing one three-ton grid fin instantly creates space for 3,000 liters of water. That's enough to keep four astronauts alive for an entire extra month on Mars. Or it's room for oxygen systems. That could mean the difference between coming home and dying 140 million miles from Earth. But wait, there's more. The fuel savings are absolutely staggering. Less weight during launch means less fuel burned. That extra fuel, it can push the upper stage further, creating massive safety margins for the complex orbital dance required to reach Mars. Think about this. NASA's plan requires 14 separate tanker flights just to fuel one Mars mission. 14 launches, 14 opportunities for something to go catastrophically wrong. Every gram of efficiency multiplies across all 14 flights. The math is terrifying and beautiful at the same time. But here's the question that's keeping SpaceX engineers awake at night. Can three fins do what four have been doing flawlessly? This is where the story gets absolutely terrifying. Grid fins aren't just pieces of metal bolted to a rocket. They're the steering wheel of a 230-foot-tall missile screaming through Earth's atmosphere at supersonic speeds. Remove one? You've just changed the fundamental physics of how this monster flies. For decades, rocket science has lived by one sacred rule. Symmetry equals survival. Four fins arranged in perfect 90-degree intervals, creating flawless balance in every direction. It's predictable. It's safe. It works. But Musk's new design? Three fins positioned at 90-90 and 180 degrees. Asymmetrical by design unbalanced on purpose. Every aerospace engineer on the planet should be screaming, that's insane. But here's the twist that's blowing minds at SpaceX. Asymmetry might actually be superior. When the booster performs its death-defying flip during re-entry, the uneven fin arrangement creates something called controlled asymmetric lift. This reduces drag and gives pilots more precise control over the descent trajectory. It's like discovering that a helicopter with three rotors flies better than one with four. But what if they're wrong? What if this asymmetry creates unpredictable flight characteristics that even SpaceX's supercomputers can't compensate for? What if the next test flight ends with a $90 million rocket becoming a fireball visible from space? During hot staging separation, temperatures reach 3,000 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt copper, hot enough to turn steel into liquid. The grid fins sit directly in this hellish inferno. 
Four fins means four components getting tortured by heat that would vaporize a human instantly. Each fin endures thermal stress that warps metal and reduces steering effectiveness during the most critical phase of flight. Re-entry. Fewer fins should mean fewer potential failures, right? Wrong. Here's the brutal engineering paradox. The thermal load doesn't disappear when you remove a fin. It gets concentrated. The three surviving fins must now handle forces that were previously shared among four. It's like asking three people to carry a weight. That was already challenging for four. SpaceX's solution? Advanced materials and active cooling systems that have never been tested at this scale, under these conditions, with human lives depending on them. The question burning through every engineer's mind, will it be enough when astronauts are depending on these systems? 140 million miles from home? The economics are absolutely mind-blowing. Each Falcon 9 titanium grid fin costs between $200,000 to $300,000. That's literally the price of a Ferrari, a single fin. Starship uses stainless steel fins at $25,000 each. Much cheaper. But when you're planning to build 1,000 Starships per year, every single dollar counts. Remove one fin per booster, and SpaceX saves $25 million annually. $25 million. That's enough money to fund 12 additional Starship flights. At the projected $2 million per launch cost, 12 more opportunities to perfect the technology. 12 more chances to advance Mars colonization. 12 more steps toward making humanity a multi-planetary species. But here's the terrifying reality. Money means absolutely nothing if the rockets don't work. And recent test results are keeping everyone at SpaceX awake at night. S-33 exploded mid-flight. S-34 followed suit. S-35 met the same devastating fate. Then S-36 detonated on the test stand with such violence that the explosion was visible from miles away. The blast was so massive that people thought a bomb had gone off. The preliminary cause, a pressure vessel failure that led to structural collapse and catastrophic fuel leak, methane and liquid oxygen, mixing in ways they should never mix. These aren't random failures. They're systematic issues with the version two design. The exact same design that will carry the three fin configuration. So why is Musk pushing forward with another major change? When the current system is literally exploding? The answer reveals his true strategy, controlled iteration under maximum pressure. Each failure teaches lessons that prevent bigger disasters later. Better to lose unmanned test vehicles now than crewed Mars missions with astronauts aboard. But critics are asking the hard question, are we watching genius level engineering or dangerous overconfidence that could set back Mars colonization by decades? The stakes couldn't be higher, and the next test will give us our answer. SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas is designed to build rockets like Ford builds cars. The three-fin design isn't just about performance. It's about manufacturing efficiency at a scale that has never been attempted in aerospace history. Fewer components mean faster assembly, reduced quality control points, simplified maintenance procedures that could cut turnaround time, from months to weeks. Each booster rolling off the production line will be 25% simpler in terms of grid fin complexity. When you're building rockets at automotive scale, every simplification creates massive advantages. Fewer spare parts, reduced inventory costs, faster turnaround between flights. This manufacturing advantage becomes absolutely critical for Mars missions. The faster SpaceX can build and launch Starships, the shorter the window between Earth and Mars launch opportunities. Instead of waiting 26 months for the next optimal launch window, rapid production could enable multiple attempts within each window, multiple chances to get it right, multiple opportunities to save lives. But there's a darker side to this equation. Here's where the three-fin decision becomes a matter of life and death. NASA's Artemis program requires 14 Starship tanker flights to fuel just one lunar mission. Mars missions? They'll need even more fuel transfers in orbit, possibly 20 or more refueling flights. Every kilogram saved on the booster means more payload capacity for the tankers. More fuel per tanker means fewer total flights required. 
Fewer flights mean lower costs and faster mission timelines. It's a mathematical cascade where small improvements create absolutely massive advantages. But the reverse is also brutally true. If the three-fin design fails, it could delay Mars colonization by years, maybe decades. The children who dream of walking on Mars might grow old waiting for SpaceX to fix their mistake. The pressure is crushing. The stakes are impossible to comprehend. And everything hinges on one test flight. Booster 18 sits at Starbase, waiting. All the evidence points to it being the first to test this revolutionary design. The timing, the version 2 configuration, the production schedule. Everything aligns for one terrifying moment of truth. Flight 12 could be the day we learn. Whether Musk's gamble pays off or destroys everything, if B-18 successfully demonstrates controlled flight and landing with three fins, it validates the entire approach. It proves that sometimes breaking the rules creates better results. But if it fails, if those three fins can't control a 230-foot rocket traveling at supersonic speeds, if the asymmetric design creates flight characteristics that tear the booster apart, SpaceX will face the most serious questions of their existence, questions about their philosophy, questions about their methods, questions about whether they're moving too fast and risking too much. The engineering team has run thousands of simulations. The math looks perfect on paper. The computer models show success. But rockets have a way of surprising even the smartest engineers. Reality doesn't always match calculations. Physics doesn't care about your confidence. And Mars doesn't care about your timeline. This isn't just about grid fins anymore. This is about a fundamental shift in how humanity approaches the impossible. Traditional aerospace engineering emphasizes proven solutions, conservative approaches, safe choices that take decades to implement. SpaceX's method? Embrace calculated risks, rapid iteration, bold decisions that other companies wouldn't dare attempt. The three-fin decision represents everything that makes SpaceX different, everything that could make humanity a spacefaring civilization or everything that could set us back when we're so close to achieving the impossible. Every decision Musk makes now echoes into the future. The children who will grow up on Mars are depending on choices being made today in a factory in Texas. The pressure is immense. The margin for error is shrinking with each test flight. The entire future of human space exploration hangs in the balance. What happens next will determine whether we're witnessing the birth of a new era or watching a cautionary tale about the dangers of moving too fast. The countdown has already begun. Booster 18 is waiting. The three fins are ready for their ultimate test. In just a few months, we'll know if Musk's revelation about Mars missions was genius or catastrophic miscalculation. The future of humanity rides on three pieces of stainless steel. So here we are, three fins, one decision, the entire future of Mars colonization. Musk isn't just redesigning a rocket. He's redesigning how we think about the impossible. Every bold choice SpaceX makes brings us closer to becoming a spacefaring species. But here's what keeps me up at night. What if we're witnessing the greatest engineering gamble in human history? What if those three pieces of stainless steel determine whether your kids grow up dreaming of Mars or mourning what could have been. The next few months will reveal everything. Booster 18 is waiting. The countdown has begun. What do you think? Is Musk a visionary pushing humanity forward? Or are we moving too fast toward disaster? Drop your thoughts below, because this conversation is just getting started. And if you're as obsessed with SpaceX's Mars mission as we are, you won't want to miss what we've uncovered about their secret fuel production plans. That video drops next week. Until then, keep looking up. The future is being written right now. The future of humanity rides on three pieces of stainless steel. Dream Chaser was declared dead. NASA rejected it in 2014. Workers got laid off. The company nearly collapsed. But here's the twist. This failed space plane just passed all final tests and is launching in months. 
While everyone watches SpaceX rockets explode and splash into oceans, Dream Chaser lands on runways like a regular airplane. No crashes, no parachutes, just smooth landings. The numbers are insane. 3,500 kilograms to space. Experiments return safer than your morning drive. So what changed? How did a rejected project become NASA's secret weapon? And why are they keeping this so quiet? Let's dive right in. Picture this. 2014. Sierra Nevada Corporation thought they had it made. Years of work. Millions of dollars. A space plane so advanced it made science fiction look real. Dream Chaser wasn't just another spacecraft. It was based on NASA's own HL-20 concept from the 1990s. Sleek, innovative, and it promised something revolutionary. Airplane-style landings in space. Then came the phone call that destroyed everything. NASA announced their commercial crew program winners. SpaceX's Dragon?